and Mammoth has the outscale. Uh, that's that's going to be the pressure of this game. <laughs> UOL, yeah, well. <laughs> they're going in, and they're going in early. And gotta say, you're not playing against the Sivir like we've seen this combo play against before. There is no spell shield, so 3-6. Uh, if King gets caught out at all, he is very likely just going to get 100 to 0 if a jungler is there. And the final pick will be the Cannon on the top side coming in for Fudge. He's mostly been playing, you know, kind of the leftovers, I feel like, for his team. The Karm on the top side. This time he gets something with a little bit more power into his hands, but has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Boss. A tall task after what was a dominant performance from him earlier today. Yeah. All very known champions locked in by both UOL of Mammoth. And I also feel like fairly fitting for how these teams perform at their best. And I know we did just see Unicorns of Love pick a late game scaling comp and beat Clutch, but at their core, Unicorns love being a very aggressive team. And Mammoth actually doesn't have the best late game macro, so securing the scaling might allow them to be a little more comfortable here in this incredibly pivotal game. Huge for both these lineups. And you heard from Edward, they want to play faster. And well, this is a chance for them to do so and kind of a pressure that they have to do so to a certain degree, but as we look at both compositions, I feel like you said it already, Unicorns Love, it's all early game, so eyes once again, as it feels like it always is, on Ananasik to be the difference maker in a lot of these lanes. Maybe it's straight to bot lane, maybe he tries to snowball the little Blanc or the Renekton, and so many options, and Mammoth have to read the play and have to stop him in his tracks. This is way more tense than I thought playing was going to be yeah, at nice. the Unicorns versus Mammoth game. I just want to kind of take a step back and acknowledge that fact when so many of the plans have gone, the pool one team gets first in the group basically every time, seven of eight times, the only time it didn't happen was with HKA, to now be in this point where the pool two seed with the win secures first and the pool three seed with the win has the opportunity to get first themselves if they were to win out and beat Clutch. I mean, it's just, this group has been thrown into absolute chaos and I love it. I love it too, unicorns of love versus Mammoth. Can Mammoth find another win here? Once again, going up against the full weight of the Unicorns of Love army standing behind them. But Chad, I think it's a fantastic point. I mean, you, you have to imagine the timeline where, oh, hold that thought, we might see Boss trying to find a big advantage here. Instant boom, boom. press the attack. Good damage. Probably force him into a recall. Fudge with the Klepto though, uh, you know, it'll cost him a little bit of early presence on the map, but he's laughing. Fudge makes money. Ten gold. <laughs> Take that, boss. Nice trade, Renekton. Yeah, what you'd actually <laughs> what you actually should see here is because Fudge got pushed back, you'll see UOL get a deep ward because they know the cannon is gone. So there you go. Ten gold to allow the enemy team to scout your jungler? Yeah, it is a nice trade, actually. <laughs> I think I think <laughs> boss will take it. It's <laughs> Directly selling out Babbitt. He just, <laughs> yeah. he's like, if you give me 10 gold, I'll tell you exactly. I'll, I'll chat it to you. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Nice ward, Renick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> of course, early game is crucial, though, and I like that we're already seeing Mammoth move in for a bit of aggressive early vision, going to lay some down. But, of course, it's already responded to on the side of Unicorns of Love. And this time, they're not going to try to contest. Yeah. It's not the previous game. They've already responded. Rex, or Rexai already moving to the top side to start blue and to get his jungle path and kicked off. Practice makes perfect. Hey, if you're not going to be able to win that level one, don't sit around. Uh, that only has to happen once on stage to every jungler before they immediately go for the buff trade. Babip going mid. Ooh, he's he's racing him. Yeah, I think he hurt Vettius. He said, I have officially ganked before two minutes, Vettius. That's 18 yeah. minutes sooner than you said I would. And he's got both reds. So, sweet. That's a good start for Babbit. Yeah, still difficult, I think, to duel against a uh, Halo Blades Rek'Sai, but will be much healthier throughout his entire clear with that extra regeneration. And can just try to pull ahead a little bit here. We'll see if the vision is used by the side of Unicorns of Love in that exchange, or if he'll even go to the Krugs in the duration of that ward. We'll at least know that he's not going there now as he turns his attention toward the bottom side, trying to three buff the opponent. I like it from Babbitt, a bit more, uh, you know, on top or active early jungle pathing. Yeah, and really, uh, the game will start when the first jungle gank happens. There is so much gank assist uh, on both sides of this game. Like, Leona Syndra is a devastating engage combo on either Zaya or Rakan. So, Ananasek really wants to probably play around this bottom side and just set King back since we know Mammoth is going to be heavily around scaling and the best way to delay scaling is to attack the enemy marksman. 
And the good news for now for the side of Mammoth is that as they are shoved under tower, there's not really any dive threat currently from Edward in Inax. Inax can obviously poke, but Edward as the melee Leona, yes, his all-in is very potent, but he has really no harass as this lane starts to play out. But using that lane pressure to push in onto the bottom side, Babip is of course already taking the camps though, so it will only be the crab secured by Ananasik. Yeah, I want to see where Ananasik goes here because uh, he has the chance to double scuttle, which will basically equalize the lane, but Babip is actually racing him to it. If Babip gets this, he's just well ahead of Ananasik in this lane, but Babic shouldn't be allowed to stay for this because they don't have mid lane priority. But Ananasik is going to know something is up when he sees that the yeah. crab is uncontested. Hasn't seen the Jarvan yet, so they might not think he's here. Here comes the gank. Boss stepping forward. The stun is there, but he's already been locked up. He's going to get knocked up, and he's going to get taken out. First blood going to Babip in the early game. Babip stepping up after some questionable moves in day one of group stage. We talked through all the possible pathing decisions. I can't necessarily blame Boss for that play because they didn't see Babip. And the fact that Babip never even aggroed the crab didn't give a tell that he was potentially up there. Boss really just wanted to finish shoving this wave. Then he could recall. And he had his jungler in the river, so he probably thought he was safe. But those are the types of small margins where junglers can make an impact. And we compare this to day one. Ba uh, Fudge was on an island. Fudge, we got him the top ten seeker. It was not from his jungler. Minus 4.6 yeah. jungle difference. Gonna have to hold that thought. As you see, a bit of aggressive trading on the bottom side. Looks like nothing will come through. Just an aggressive trade. But really, Fudge was getting dove repeatedly. Yes, he played very well. But this time around, it's a different story. So the play continues on bottom side. Fudge off to a much better start. Bab up there to support him. Yeah, you always gotta adjust your expectations in these bot lane mage matchups because you see an AD carry get chunked to like 30%, and you're like, whoa! Oh, he's completely out of cooldowns. So he's just gonna <laughs> health push him back up after that one. Uh, they need to get the first uh, burst. But man, you can see Ananasik really is getting chased around the jungle by Babip. Gonna... Still has the level disadvantage. Ooh, nice knockout. interrupts. Halo Blades is still there. It's a lot of damage that can't might come have out. To flash. Kind of one they out. might kill him. Tunnel's there. Can they follow it up? Risky from Anonasic. Okay. Boss just dashes right out, but a lot of time burn for that one. Jungle camps that could have been taken in the meantime. So, a very good start for Mammoth in terms of trying to pull themselves up to two wins and try and replicate what they did on day one. And you just get, I just saw Dracos did like a little I dance. Did, I did He's a like, little dance. I'm, I'm like, looking for the my, triple two, two group. One step closer to the two, 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 two group. Yeah, and just a reminder for the viewers, if we do get a three-way tie at two, two, which in order for that to happen, Mammoth needs to win this game, and then Clutch needs to beat Mammoth, the, there will be two tiebreaker games played, and it will be seeded based on of average win time. Yep. So... I currently don't know what those are, but I guarantee you <laughs> we will touch it on broadcast and tell you who has the advantage, especially when that uh, Mammoth clutch game is happening. So for Mammoth, hoping to find a win here, potentially looking at a very long day of tiebreakers come through. But we'll have to find out. And for now, it's kind of eyes on UOL to see what they can do to get a bit more control of this game. Currently a 1K goal lead for Mammoth. The pressure on them to snowball. Yeah. But on the upside, UOL, we talked about it. Very early game focused. Still, admittedly, very early game. But, yeah. I mean... As far as like who needs to do something right now, uh, it's UOL who needs to do stuff to Mammoth. Mammoth, I think, has the outscale. Kenanol goes in. Boss gonna get locked up twice. Fudge trying to get a bit more damage. Boss. That has to be careful. Extending the trade is not in his favor. Good play from Boss, but Fudge with quick reactions to get out there. Yeah, but will actually be unlikely to stick around here and doesn't have teleport to get back to wave. So that little flash trade right at the end actually quite impactful because that's a minion waves worth of experience in gold uh, that boss is able to get out of fudge. Good exchange. Yeah. We come back though, Hextech Revolver. Won't even, it looks like, doesn't have the TP. So, very big favor. And now in the meantime, UOL take this opportunity. They have bot lane priority. They're not worried about the mid lane farm, so they are going to be able to grab the Infernal too. So things starting to shift back to a certain degree and Unicorns will have favor. Maybe a boss can continue to carry them through. And honestly, getting closer and closer to level six, bot lane is a similar story. The Zaya will get a get out of jail free card. She has the clench. She will have the ultimate soon, but if they can find a play before that ticks over, maybe they can get something done here. And a second Infernal spawning in five minutes. There's a, a fine line between attempting to outscale and over-respecting the other team. Mm. And uh, recall timings, what they were with, you know, teleports being down top lane. I'm, I'm a little surprised that Mammoth did give that over to OL, but it is, it is out of respect of the Leona, Syndra, Rek'Sai, LeBlanc, CC chain. At this point in the game, anyone who gets hit by that first CC on Mammoth dies. 
if they allow Unicorns of Love to group and land all that CC. So I think that's why they didn't go for the Infernal Drake. And just didn't have the vision. And just had not had the bot, yeah. uh, the bot lane priority to set up the necessary Dragon Vision. Jarvan yep. will be spotted out by the side of UOL. They can fish or see that play coming. Destiny will not get the chance to engage. So, I mean, makes sense, right? Like, you can't walk into Fog of War against the Syndra. It's just not really a viable option at this point in the game. And earlier we saw Vulcan taking cleanse on the Rakan. Now Destiny mm -hmm. has not opted for that. It means he's not the free face check bot that Vulcan was able to be for, for Clutch Gaming. Yeah, Mercury Treads are very, very important for Mammoth this game because so much of UOL will be about chaining one CC into the next and they need to be able to disrupt that timing in team fights. Now I have to keep our eyes on top lane though. You can see Fudge doing very well in gold. Babip actually the gold leader in this game. Quite surprising to see a jungle in that position, but yeah. it's still very early on. But Fudge, Anonisic was present on the top side. A good bit of vision will at least spot out Krugs if they are contested. But Fudge, very nervous under that tower, and I think rightfully so. No ultimate available means it's quite easy for an action and, and Rek'Sai side to threaten that dive. Yeah, and thinking about what Unicorns can do next, top lane is definitely one of the things they can look for because they have Rek'Sai at level 6 with Flash. Uh, any lane where he actually makes it in can be a potential kill lane, and Mammoth doesn't have great vision for it, which is why actually both of their soul laners are hugging turret. The, the early game gank by Babip to actually get ahead of Anana 6 Rek'Sai is so pivotal because when they have these two soul lanes that have to respect the gank assist, normally the jungler is able to take over the game and the jungle, but since Rek'Sai fell behind early, that just hasn't happened, and Mammoth is fairly comfortably scaling into 10 minutes. Definitely are. Bad news, of course, for them is that in the meantime, Boss able to grab two tower plates. That was, of course, traded for the chance for the bot lane to reset towards the top side of the map. Both teams clearly very aware of the power of Rift Herald yeah. in an early game focused game. And it's going to be matched, of course, on the opposite side by the Unicorns of Love. So they're not really going to get any kind of tempo advantage here on the side of Mammoth as you are already headed top side. Leona's moving up currently and laying down vision to make sure that one does not go over uncontested. UOL actually has an opportunity here to pull back in the game. They have the teleport advantage on boss over Fudge if they wanted to just brute force this Rift Herald since they can also potentially get a 5v4 pick uh, onto Mammoth. So UOL outplayed Clutch at the Rift Herald by ambushing Clutch when Clutch was trying to do it. If Mammoth starts this, then UOL definitely has an opportunity to win a fight. They need to be very careful. Bob is horrendously overextended. The chains will connect. He does it. He needs to flash. Yep. He'll be forced out there. Of course, the flag and drag already burned. So small advantage for the Unicorns of Love, but Mammoth not pushing too far in. Edward. Oh, Knocked Edward's up. isolated. Challenger Smite comes in. He's going to lock him up, but he's locked in the midst of the time. Are they going to be able to get him? Hourglass comes out. Good damage coming in for King. Hasn't been forced to burn his ult yet, but there comes the scatter of the week. What else can he get? A big ultimate coming in. Boss on the backside. Trying to clean him up. Bobbip has gone down. One kill over to the Unicorns of Love. They have control of the area for now, but they are demand disadvantage. Edward forced back. Anonisic forced back. And the play is going to stop in its tracks. Yeah, both of these teams understanding the power of a pre-14 minute Rift Herald, not willing to concede that objective. But Edward being a little bit caught out of position is what drove this play towards action. And it also shows us why UOL is so favored in these mid-game fights, because even though Edward got taken low and had to burn his ultimate on a solo Jarvan. When the TP comes in, one Renekton sitting in the middle of four people is able to just distract them easily as they clean up the kill. So while getting caught, UOL still wins that fight one to zero. Mammoth needs to continue to try and scale. When you talk about early game power, I think Renekton is the definition of early game power. He and Lee Sin, of course, right up there on that list. And you can see it in Boss's hands doing a lot of work. Spear of Shojin Rush appears to be the choice. He's going to be lethal in duels as we move later into the game. But also, I just I think uh, Mammoth not quite respecting the tankiness of the Leona in that play. When you have the, the Eclipse plus the Aftershock, she is very difficult to kill. They burn so many cooldowns, and the Ignite really the only thing doing damage. So despite that, though, however, yeah. Mammoth will still get the setup here on the Herald. Yeah, I mean, Mammoth, even though they don't have a huge amount of early game tools, are, are playing quite well to scale up. They have teleport advantage and they use that for Rift Herald, but if that means giving over the second Infernal to UOL, it may not be worth it. And they don't have great vision to be able to rush this. Second Infernal as well to a team. Well, they're try they're trying to rush it now. Renekton. 
It'll be very difficult. Uh, Triple's going to stay around to make sure those plates go in their favor. Dragon has already gone down. Fudge Lockdown dead. is there. Fudge instantly deleted, and now they can try to look for a fight. Too clean from the Unicorns of Love. Edward did such a good job waiting in the top brush for about 25 seconds before that play happened, waiting for Mammoth to go and try and disrupt that second Infernal Drake. Huge Drake spawns for UOL to get that double Infernal, because burst thresholds are going to be so important in this game between LeBlanc and Cinder. That extra damage from the Infernal Drakes will be big. And you already have Warrior Enchantment, Spear of Shojin, a completed the Ludens, presumably No Man's close to his as well, and that's going to be big, big damage in the fights to come. Triple luckily with the Spellbook can opt to take something like the Exhaust to mitigate some of the kill pressure, but it is just going to get harder and harder for this team to survive. And we're still very much in the period of the game where Unicorns of Love's composition should just be objectively stronger in terms mm -hmm. of raw champion stats. Especially with the double Infernal, still able to take down more plates. So remember, if Unicorns win this game, they lock first in this group. Qualify for the bracket stage where they would play the two seed from one of the other groups. And that, Such an accomplishment for them and their region. No matter what happens, in that best of five, just getting first seed in a group like this, in a group with, with clutch game, in a group with Mammoth, is, is big. I mean, it matters. Yeah. Unless, you know, they get first, and then Damwon goes 0-2 tomorrow, gets the two seed, and draws into them. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking crazy. That's yeah, true. I mean, like, the thing is, is you have to be ready. That's the thing about these draws, is you really do just never know, right? Because yeah. clutch could be looking at, like, oh, second, how did we do this? Like, what position could we be in? And then... You never know who's going to get second tomorrow. Is it going to be Flamingo? And you're like, or first. And now you know, oh, well, now we're playing yeah. Flamingo in a best of five. I mean, I was saying, I was saying this before the tournament, but uh, I think a lot of people had overlooked how many games the emerging regions had won in play-in stages in the last few years. They, they've been slowly taking games and been very close to breaking through. And I thought this was going to be the year where one of them breaks through, or one of the years where a major region that our English language audience cares about wouldn't make it through. Mm. Um, that has a chance of happening, but I think we're kind of just seeing UOL being that breakout team right now. We'll see. There's plenty of games to play. It could also be Mammoth with everything we've seen so far. So True. Can't wait to see the end of this game. And remember, it still is a story of scaling for the side of Mammoth. They have the Orianna. They have a Kennedy who's going to get scarier and scarier as the game goes. Even if he hasn't necessarily gone for the, the full team fight itemization, instead opting for the Gunblade to help him stay healthy in a lane against the Renekton. It is crazy, though, because I feel like every year we say, we say that. And every year it's like, yeah, ah, someone wins a game, and there's one story where you think it might close out, and it never quite happens. But here we are again, Jet. Yeah, this I also is the, it feels like this is the year. I know. I feel like... <laughs> I hope I don't get memed for saying what I had just said in the previous sentence, because no, every year we're true. like, no, uh, yeah, the play-in teams are getting stronger. The gap is closing. Yeah, but really, it it hasn't necessarily manifested. Uh, last year, we saw China break through Korea in the world final, right? And this year, we saw Europe win MSI. There's a lot of upheaval in overall perceptions of regional strength. That's a much bigger conversation than is in this game, and we're not going <laughs> to be able to prove for or for not in this game, but I think that's a conversation everyone's having this year yeah. about what it means for overall League of Legends, and we'll see what happens in this group. Oh, that's going to be a stun. The lockup triple with the exhaust. This is a stopwatch here. Buys a bit more time. Rakan coming on the way in. Can use triple as a highway to jump in. Locked Whoa. up no man. That's going to be a knocking back. And that's the kill for triple. Well played by Destiny to save the day. And they're going to keep going. Fudge wants to take down Edward. Uses the ult. Just going to get the flash there. And now the pressure's on in mid lane. Those types of turns are so crucial for Mammoth. Being able to take down no man's. Get more gold on a triple now. Matching what no man's has. Scaling up with that extra Orianna shockwave damage. But... They're still double Infernal, and they burn both of their Soul Lane's ultimates, so I'm not sure if they're going to be able to push through for this next turret. Oh, Destiny does not have... He's instantly dead. Oh, dear. That's it. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is a Spear of Shoujin Renekton. If there is one champion in the game you should absolutely not face check into, it is that one. <laughs> Shout out to the guy who just screamed, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> not ball lane. <laughs> <laughs> not into that brush, my friend. And that's the thing, in Destiny, you know, I think Guardian is so fantastic for lane, but sometimes I do wonder, Spellbook or Khan, you know, gives you the cleanse in the mid game if you need it. But, uh, yeah, does balance things out a little bit. UOL, 1.5k golden lead, moving up slowly towards 2k as we take a look back at this play. Yeah, dead center on that Shockwave, but a uh, timely stopwatch by Triple gives him enough time, and then right there, if No Man's doesn't flash that Rakan engage, it does mean he's dead. Uh, also... Where are you going? Unflashable <laughs> <laughs> as he walks into that brush. 
And if there's any champion Ooh. that could get out, it would be Rakan, but that is uh, that is not the case in that exchange. And now actually gives Unicorns of Love a decent opportunity to try to push in and take a bit more control back. But without the mid lane tower, the game is still going to be much more difficult for them to push too far in. Oh that's God, fantastic chance. scatter the weak puppet makes it out. Ognanasic goes over the wall. Solar flare just for a little bit more on top. It's gotta be terrifying to play against for Mammoth because UOL just has so many CC tools, just every single champion brings it to the fight. So Babim, even with Cinderhulk and two components for Gargoyle Stonepoint and Flash, nothing he can do. Once he gets engaged on, he's dead. Flying Drake came out. That's gonna be the TP flank. Destiny off to the side, triple, puts the ball on him. Might be looking for the oh. engage. Destiny has the flash. They're just gonna pull back though. They do get, not a lot actually, out in the end. Yeah, Mammoth really on the back foot here as UOL is really looking to break the game open. So top turret down, Ocean Drake actually shouldn't be that high of a priority at 18 minutes for UOL. If they do take it, would just be to accelerate more towards an Elder Drake win condition. And I mean, Mammoth is, is trying to take it, but it might end up costing them a lot of map pressure. I, I think this is generally a low importance Drake at this point in the game. It's going to force them to reset now. Puts Unicorns 11 in a position to potentially threaten Fudge here into the tower. They're not going to take the risk, but you know, that entire play costs them the TP and puts them in a position where they lose the top lane tower as well. So Unicorns Love coming out on top again. 2k gold lead, double Inferno. Once again, a, uh, a comp that you said, you know, on a clock to a certain degree, but I think ahead of the clock for now. Yeah, you can buy as much time as you want as long as you have a big gold lead. Uh, watching this fight one more time, an interrupt on the EQ from Inax, and then once that landed, it was just over. Solar Flare for style points by Edward. <laughs> That's all you can say in the end. Of course, Renekton going to continue to get scarier and scarier as well. A lot of the defensive stats from the Jarvan are not going to matter. Even he will be on the one-shot list in the eyes of this Renekton. When he does complete stone plate, it'll buy them a bit of time. Like, the reason I keep saying Mammoth has a scaling advantage is eventually the Jarvan will be tanky enough to buy time and eat some of the CC. And then all, when all the CC is burned, it's the Zaya who's proccing lethal tempo and the big shockwave combo with Cannon Ultimate, who will have stopwatch by that point as well to disrupt the CC combo. They just, it just takes so long for Mammoth to get there. Um, and additionally, outside of the context of a laning phase, Boss, as we get later and later in the game, is gonna have a hard time stacking up Fury reliably. You know, empowered ability is really key to a lot of Renekton's aggressive trading. So difficult to execute, so possible, of course, for Unicorns of Love, but it feels like easier than the mid to late game for Mammoth to pull off a successful fight. That is, of course, assuming they're not at a deficit. Oh. And, ooh, Destiny fishing there. Will not find the knockup. Good on No Man's to get out, but clearly Mammoth on the back foot. Yeah, and with Mammoth being on the back foot, they're trying to get fishing control back in this part of the jungle. Since two soul laners are shown by UOL, it does mean the Mammoth can stay there. They, they would hope for a teleport flank, but they don't have any deep vision in there. And whoop, another flash being down just makes them more vulnerable. But it does show three bot, now they can get Edward. Engage, triple now coming in, trying to lock up Edward. Just a single support target, but they will be able to find the kill. King gonna grab that one. We'll speed him up a little bit, but Unicorns of Love, in the meantime, grabbing a tower. Once again, trading something for something else. Unicorns of Love, extending that gold lead. And it just doesn't feel like there's 100% a right choice for Mammoth. They can't right. just get any clean advantage. And when you have a Leona and a Rek'Sai roaming between three lanes who are very successful at pushing out, Mm -hmm. It's very hard for Mammoth to find a, a clean, successful play. Yeah, and I do think that this style of team composition of UOL, where everyone has the ability to create kill pressure, CC chaining is good, it's all relying on a mid-game snowball, is potentially going to be much more popular as we progress throughout the tournament, and the teams get more confident in their ability to execute and close out games. It is, I think, still a question of whether or not UOL is going to be able to do it in this game, because they do have double infernal, but they're only 2,000 gold ahead. Banshees just finished, i.e. not there, but somewhat on the way for King Fudge, working up towards Zonia's. If, if Mammoth can actually get to those items, they may withstand UOL and still turn this game around. But right now, UOL still has really all the tools to try and advance this game. And playing a pretty successful 1-3-1 feels like the most successful example we've seen so far in the tournament. You see a lot of teams maybe building to split push out to generate some mid-game advantages, but it feels like very often it just goes straight back to team fighting. Mm -hmm. The later we go, so good to see Unicorns Love um, so successful with a strategy that hasn't necessarily worked that well for a lot of teams thus far. 
And uh, scaling the name of the game for Mammoth has been, I think, kind of the go-to. We saw Clutch be very successful with it. We've seen it in other groups as well. Splice, up until their game versus DFM, felt very comfortable going for scaling options. Still trying to break this mid lane turret, though, and I really feel like you all need to try and catch Mammoth in transit somehow, and they have fairly good vision control. It's just Mammoth has been decent about not getting caught in transit because they have the one control word in that brush. I really wanted Anana 6 Rek'Sai to just go in when they had everyone up there, make sure the vision is cleared. Otherwise, Mammoth can safely go past these areas uh, to defend their turrets when the waves crash. Asking you shall receive. Now they know the vision is there. They don't have the pressure right now to contest it. However, they're in a position where they have left King alone in the mid lane, and you can see what it's cost him. That's a lot of health. This is going to force him to back, and that means that in the end, Anonis like, is yeah. still going to be able to walk into that bush and clear that ward anyway. And that's kind of the position that Mammoth are in when they're behind. They, once again, cannot win any small trade when Unicorns of Love is, is on the ball. Yeah, control ward immediately replaced by triple, though. Maybe. So it's back, and King is halfway back to lane with Cinder alt down. So for now, UOL has not been able uh, to accelerate this game to the space where they want to. And until they have Baron, Oriana, you know, the classic wave clear champion, can be very easy, yeah. especially when paired with Azaya, to just delete any of these coming creep waves. And Renekton pushing in, and of course, is going to cost Kennen a lot of CS. His fudge was pulled over just to make sure that there was no dive. However, this is not a triple infernal. They will grab an ocean, and as you mentioned, past five minutes, maybe not your favorite yep. Drake to see. What's the next spawn gonna be? Cloud. Still, I think Cloud's an underrated Drake, but I've been down that road before. <laughs> we don't need to have that discussion. I think in 2019, people are less upset about Cloud Drakes. Well, because it gives in combat move speed now. Yeah. Yeah. And also, when you're a Leona with Moby Boots, you're happy about any form of movement speed. And now, I really, it just feels like UL trying to play a controlled game where they choke Mammoth out. Uh, they are getting a lot more resources, but they haven't really been able to extend the gold lead whatsoever. You check in on the levels, you've got mid laners even, bot laners even, small difference in the junglers. Looks like balanced out now, and really only Fudge is falling behind in terms of raw XP as he's been forced to come into this mid lane over and over again just to make sure that there's not a dive. Yeah, and Mammoth is prepped right now for the stall. The, you look at the mini map and their Baron Vision, they have good Baron coverage, four control wards, one of them just being cleared out, but they also had time to reset and pick up more control wards for that. And the, the items I'm gonna talk about are Zonia's, Infinity Edge, and Zonia's. Once Mammoth has that, I think they'll start fighting. Until then, they're gonna try and defend as best as possible. Just holding on, you can see your horns of love just trying to kind of force on this wave, slowly chipping down at the tower. Might take a few more setups before they get it, but they are in a good position to do so. And uh, yeah, as you said, waiting on those items. No man's starting to poke out. Obviously hurts a lot with the flat pen on top of the Luden's Echo, in addition to the double Infernals. But it does feel like the game is stalled out to a certain degree. Mammoth not really giving up any greater advantages. Fudge now moving forward, but it's just going to clear out the wave. That's going to be ulti Fudge. And we'll just use the stopwatch yep. there. One less cooldown for him to have, but he is uh, just a little bit of gold away from the Hourglass. Yeah, he's about 300 gold away from Zani's Hourglass, so that stopwatch well-timed as far as getting that. I mean, the challenge for Mammoth is going to be breaking out of this defensive holding pattern. It is actually quite difficult to play one passive style for 25 minutes and then suddenly flip that mental switch in your head. They should be trying to do something, but for now, they're just playing on the timer of this mid lane turret, hoping to keep it alive. Trying to clear it out. Hoping to clear some of his wave. Destiny now going in, though. Does lock up Edward, but no one else. I think they have to pull back on that one. And honestly, is on the backside. Fudge, though, continues to press forward, uses the gun blade. Of course, has a stopwatch too. We'll just back off. But you can see that Mammoth are starting to feel a little bit more confident, fishing mm -hmm. for some of these picks. And really, only the really only weak point on the map feels like Boss is able to freely push that wave in over and over again. They're going to try to turn that though. And Anasik just goes right in on the fudge. The ultimate has been pulled out. Won't get the hourglass, but that ultimate being down is crucial. Yeah. Getting ult down out of Fudge is big for Boss's ability to try and damage that turret. But the fact that he still has Flash means he ultimately can't get anything done with it. Gold lead's slowly creeping up, though. There's a lot of side waves that are getting lost to a few uh, random turret shots, but Triple actually having the time to go up to that top lane to shove it in uh, is indicative of uh, UOL's inability to apply the right amount of pressure, and having that mid lane turret still up at 27 minutes is a win for Mammoth. It's interesting because it feels like we've seen two forms of UOL, one where they kind of limit their win conditions and one game where they have you know a lot of variety and some more crazy picks. And yeah. 
Second time that they've done this versus the likes of, of Mammoth, where we haven't seen them go for something like the Heimerdinger, the, the Kales in the mid lane, instead going for a lot more, I guess you'd say, traditional comp outside of the, the bot lane Syndra. See what they could do to maybe turn that around and transition into a greater lead. Still obviously in lead at this point, double Infernal, 2k gold, you know, kill advantage, two tower advantage, but got to close the game out. And that's the big kind of prove it situation that we've been in for a lot of play-ins is that teams have really struggled to just end games with a lead. Absolutely have, and it's only a <laughs> 2.4 thousand goal lead. And with Rek'Sai showing bottom lane so far away from the turret, this gives Mammoth time to get more control wards in the Barren River. Uh, that was the, basically the one thing I was going to say UOL would be able to play around is the clearing out the control wards in the yeah. river, allowing them to try and get Baron King. and Cryo, but... Taz ulti still feels comfortable, but this mid lane tower is still alive for Mammoth. You yeah. have to feel like this game gets so much easier for Unicorn's Love if they can just force this down, but they have not been able to. And it's really only getting more dangerous as the leads that their solo laners accrued early on are just not nearly as consequential as they were five minutes ago. Yeah. King still waiting on that IE. He took a detour to Hex Drinker to make sure he couldn't get one shot. They're playing the long con, Dracos. Willing to do it. And you can see, once again, Unicorns of Love shifting their attention to Fudge, fishing for these big plays. Fudge, though, has Flash. We'll have Alt shortly. Might get him this time. Dashing through the Flash, the stun, the lockup. Can they change the CC policy? They do. Boss taking down Fudge. That's a massive pick for the side of Unicorns of Love. Are they going to stay and pressure this wave, or will they shift their attention to Baron? Flash Q is one of my favorite things to do on Leona because it lines up the R on a non-Mercury Treads user. Remember I said Mercury Treads were going to be very key in this game, but Fudge wanted to get that damage. Now they can break it open. Get a stun mid. They're going for more. King, forced to ult. Has to pull back. And x still with the Syndra ult up and available. Trying to set up, using the Dark Sphere as much as possible. Boss going to break down a tower. Mammoth yeah, needs to make a clutch decision. They can't just concede everything. They've given up mid lane tower. They might just give up inhib as well. This is disastrous for Mammoth. All in the back of a single pick onto Fudge. Their entire defense, stalwart up until this moment, has fallen apart. Maybe try to turn it here onto Boss, but it's, they put too much attention towards Boss. It might turn against them mid lane. Rexxon and LeBlanc remain. Boss will make it out. Level 16 now, and things looking very good for UOL as they extend their goalie to 4K and a 4-tower advantage. Such a big play by UOL, because now with the inhibitor down, that requires a nearly full-time defender in that bottom lane, which is the furthest lane from Baron, which is now a big threat. So kind of one of the reasons I think this style of team composition can be more popular later is because, like, think about how well it felt like Mammoth was stalling, right? And then they make one mistake. It's like, now we're down to the inhibitor, and a Baron loses us the game. That's kind of what they're what they're feeling right now. So uh, was Mammoth's got to do something. Yeah, and one of the reasons I think we see so much Renekt in priority is for situations like this, where normally you feel like he falls off after one or two items, mm -hmm. but with the introduction of Spirit Shojin, he just never really feels like he loses a 1v1 duel, especially against the likes of an AP Kennen. And finally seeing this champion kind of come out on top after what was some very lackluster numbers in the first few days. Okay, there's the Infinity Edge on the King. The wave is also somewhat pushed out. However, Mammoth doesn't have a flank ward if they wanted Fudge to come in with an ultimate, which is really what I think Mammoth would need to get a full fight onto UOL. So now they're just kind of trying to face check into a bunch of CC from UOL. Let's see what happens. Bobbit, trying to turn this play around, though. Bit off more than you can chew. No man's now coming down, trying to turn this fight. Edward looks like he may have given up his life. The boss is on the way in. The ulti comes out, going right into the middle of the team. The Kenny has wave. been absolutely deleted. King now trying to throw something out. Can he pull the CC back? Can he save his team? So oh. much damage for King! Double kill now coming through. A beef moment. Boss now trying to make it out. No man's. Can just try to turn this play into instant. He connects the snare. What else can he get? Triple now. Trying oh. to save in. The triple kill coming in for King. King so clutch in the moment where it matters most. Inex now running for his life. The ult comes out, but it won't matter. The flag, oh. the drag. Mammoth are back in the game. They waited 31 minutes for the Infinity Edge and immediately win a team fight. Now it is just Boss alive with no ultimate, and he's he's teleporting for the base. He wants to end this. It's, it, he's gonna he's gonna get one have, turret. No, but they have, but to, they have to rush Baron. They finish Baron. They get the four second recall. They're fine. Boss is gonna break a single tower and walk away. It's a good consolation, but he pays with the TP to do so. Respawn on Destiny as well is good to have. That is Baron for Mammoth. The ball is now in their court. Three minutes where they should have absolute control of this game. What is happening today, Dracos? Every <laughs> lower seed has a chance at a comeback. And right here, Edward did not have the support of his team. They didn't have the mid lane pushed up enough necessary, and they are unable to get on to King cleanly. Watch these 
feathers from King. Not only does he have the alt out, he sends Tumor out the side and rips them through all of UOL. Then still has Flash for the follow at the end of this. And you have to look at this fight from the perspective of the Unicorns of Love. Because they started the fight by instantly deleting the Kennet. Kennet did absolutely yeah. nothing in the exchange. They had to think that that one was in their favor. But fighting Zaya in that funnel, in that pinch where the Feathers could do so much, turned the fight against them. And now, I wonder, Unicorns of Love, even if they can win the fight, will they have the confidence to fight against 9k yeah. Zaya damage? 9k damage in that fight? I bet he had like six in the rest of the game <laughs> with how much they've been turtling for the rest of this. He definitely had more than six, but Gotta you get, get the those point. numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. So, so now UOL needs to do everything they can do to disrupt this push bot lane and just get other waves shoving because Mammoth needs to push in the lane where their inhibitor is down. That's why they're down there with King right now. And UOL, with the scaling advantage, right? One more lost team fight could actually be the game for Mammoth, but because they've killed so many structures already, if Mammoth missteps, UOL can win. We are at that point of just craziness. Is this the misstep from No Man's? He's gonna make it out, will not get stunned. Look at all the wave pressure that UOL has in side lanes. So they're gonna at least get one. <laughs> no one on Mammoth is back this to is the so, This is such a scrappy game. They're just gonna try to, are we just gonna well, base race? Did we just handshake on a base race in the play-ins game that could decide Unicorns of Love? They're okay. in triple trying to clear it. Okay, can UOL dive triple? Because triple's gonna try and wave clear. It becomes the he wave. just has to get rid of the wave. Alti pulls back. He has no flash. Cleanse. They're moving all in. But here comes Fudge. He's going to try to turn it. He has his one. Is Edward's going to be in trouble now. They're trying to take out Triple. Moving in. Edward's going to get knocked out. Fudge stepping forward. They've lost an inhibitor tower. All of Mammoth forced back. And at the end of the day, Unicorns of Love have not lost too much yet. But maybe this is the turn. Fudge stepping forward on the Inax. They're going to get one pick. But what else can they get? They did not grab any more towers. All things considered, Unicorns of Love have to be happy with this trade. Well, Mammoth is accelerating. There's a minute left on the Baron power play. They have double TP. There's a minion wave bottom lane. Now UOL has to get back. They will have a numbers advantage early. Three people can recall. And there's still three people for Mammoth who have to make their way down bottom lane. No man's. A not a sick boss. The top lane of the Unicorns of Love have to hold on here. That back lane already being crashed in. They're just trying to clear the wave. Triple and Fudge paying them respect, backing off. But meanwhile, in the mid lane, the tier two will fall. But instead, they're shifting their attention. The wave is going to crash. And meanwhile, Mammoth are going to move in. They're ready to dive if necessary, but there's no creep wave here. It feels like yeah. they should have gone mid instead. They will instead wait for the team to group up. Can they actually pressure here? Can they actually fish for a dive? Can they shift that mentality and know that they are now the aggressors? It looks like the answer is yes. Well, they have a chance to break one and hit. Inax is up in five seconds if UOL want to try a fight. Patience, in this case, would actually be beneficial for UOL, though, because I think they would lose that fight. And that's it with the final 10 seconds of the Baron. Mammoth can just get empowered, recalls, and back off. Destiny will clear a ward. But instead, they're setting up a death brush. Destiny on the retreat. If Unicorns will have fallen into this trap, it'll be disastrous. King isolated, looking like some tasty bait, but we will not find the follow-up. And I'm surprised that Mammoth are staying with the Baron, but falling off. Yeah, it is a, a very high-risk play, actually, for them, since their inhibitor is up as well, and they, they're they just they're just really feeling it. I feel like once they got that Infinity Edge, and they had to play 31 and a half minutes of pure defense, they're like, finally, our time to fight back. Uh, they just can't get a, a control themselves, but they need to show a restraint, since they're at the point in the game where any mistake can matter. Not getting stunned by that first Leona ultimate, so key in buying time for Triple to come back in this one. And then it's just about Mammoth chasing. Yeah. Look at the closing distance. It's huge. Fudge and Rakan. And the thing here, too, is that this could have been a fine play for Unicorns of Love, but the double TP really lets Mammoth sustain the pressure on the bottom side, does not let uh, UOL clear out that way, move to the mid lane, and all things considered, it works out nicely. Uh, Unicorns of Love, don't go back into this part of the map. You have to remember what happened last time. Well, I think Unicorns is in a really difficult spot now because they do not win 5v5s. So if Mammoth just stays grouped, uh, unless UOL catches them while they're grouping or gets an amazing CC lock on someone to start, they probably lose. There's a cleanse four item plus BF sword Zaya with a maw. Plus so you're... Seeks from the Rakan. So just... Ooh, yeah, that true. That's a lot of damage. That is... An insane amount of damage. That is kill five people worth of damage. That is, you don't need really any other carry in the fight. Just protect the Zaya and everyone will die levels of damage. And here's the story of the game. You can see where, uh, you know, a difficult early game turned into complete Unicorns of Love control and is now just shifting back in the favor of Mammoth as their scaling finally kicks in. Yeah, 2,000 gold lead, but a larger advantage when you consider the strength of their champions. But because of the CC ability of UOL, it's still possible they win this fight. 
It all comes down to execution. Who can the Shockwave hit? Who can get a flank engage? Right now, UOL and Edward are going to try and get that flank engage. No Man's going all the way around. Edward might try and force something. A lot of defensive organization on the side of Mammoth. They're hoping to find a pick. They've started the info. Oh, he got Fudge! Fudge shut, shut down. No Man's with the hero play. The rest of the team, they need to pull back. They're at a man disadvantage. There's no way they try to fight. They have to try and fight because a four stack Elder could end the game for UOL with only one Nexus turret up. So Mammoth must persist in this area at a 4v5. No Man's can just go right back in. The exhaust is there for King. Or rather for triple, if he gets the opportunity to use it. Boss the waited. ultimate on No Man's is back up, so he can full burst another Squishy. The squishiest was Fudge, who he targeted. The next one won't be as easy, but this is so dire for Mammoth. They bought themselves a little bit of time, though. You can see in the mid lane, Inax forced to clear out the wave, forced to stop the minions going in. They're turning their sights on Edward. King just flashes over the wall. No fear jumps into the midst of the fight. Edward will get an ultimate out, but it's not enough. They bought themselves more time. Triple now on the hunt, but No Man's off to the backside. They set their sights on No Man's. They set their sights on the little Blanc. But he's just buying time for the rest of his team. No Man's goes back in, focusing on Faba. We'll just retreat. But ha Honestly, No Man's fantastic movement in this game to keep and, Unicorns Love Hope alive. And the super minions in mid are pushing UOL back. Now it is on Anana 6 Rek'Sai to try and steal this Elder. He gets Vision, okay. but it Probably will be suicide. Off. He's not going to get it, Jat. My Ooh. god, what a back and forth game, the Elder. I thought it was done when Kennen died, but Mammoth managed to hold on. And I gotta say, normally games like this are boring, but when the stakes are so high, it is just incredibly tense, Dracos, because Yoel with the win clinches first in the group. Mammoth also moving to two would give them the potential to beat Clutch later, and they would get first in the group. They have a, I call this a baby elder. It's very <laughs> weak, uh, even though that's a juxtaposition. They're using it for mid priority, and watch the Blanc. He wants Fudge again. Can you take him out? The Zanius is there. In theory, Blanc is right above damage. Fudge. We've yet to see the cannon all really come to fruition, and Mammoth have still been able to win fights. Triple, now potentially in trouble. Good oh, damage. Oh triple has to back off. They've lost control of the Baron area. The Elder Dragon, I think, giving them a bit of false confidence when they don't really have the vision set up to be moving in on this Baron. No Man's has been the star of UOL all summer split long. Best stats in the LCL across many axes, and really, even though he didn't have the most amazing early game, coming in clutch with these flanks in this one. Triple. UOL start the Baron, triple still half health. If No Man's can actually one-shot the Orianna, maybe UOL wins the fight. Keeping eyes on both. Tension just continues to build. King trying to poke to the wall. He steps in, he's not gonna get anything else. The engage is now coming in, they split their attention, but now, once again, the cannon just gets taken. Fudge! Fight off, they don't even need the LeBlanc, he bought so much time, but the rest of the team jumps in. King, it's his time to shine, he needs to start hitting the auto attacks. All eyes on the Zion, but done. he flashes forward. Can they finish the job? King, still wreaking havoc through the back line. King, still so incredibly strong. King, it's gonna be the difference maker. Wait for the sun again. The feathers will come back. It does not matter, the triple kill for King. This man is on fire. Unbelievable late game carry from King so far. GA still up, they cannot touch him. They are doing their best to escort this minion wave towards the base. Four man push against two. No Baron though. Can you all well wave clear to stay alive in this game? King sidestep here. Holding on and on a sick and an axe. Are they going to be enough? Triple's moving in as well. The scaling once again in their favor. Pressing forward. Oh, the Dragon Buff should fall off shortly. 10 seconds. A lot of minions dead. Three King, more. Hitting the towers. That's all that really matters. They need to clear the minions. If they clear the minions, this gets way easier. Cinder should have the range. She can pick up one of the minions. The TP now coming in, though. They're trying to buy time. He's given his life. Have they overstayed their welcome? Oh. Now they're trying to turn. Edward goes in, but finally, they're on the Nexus. Stalled. They're going to turn everything. The Shockwave to seal it, and Mammoth have done it. They've taken down the Unicorns of Love. <sighs> there were moments in that game. <laughs> <laughs> where Mammoth just has to keep typing winnable in team chat because to not give up and to stall until 32 minutes where they're not even allowed to think about an aggressive play, turn it around on UOL when UOL was so close to clinching first in the group. What a day, what a game. They own the head-to-head -head <laughs> against well, UOL. <laughs> listen, if they get the third win... It doesn't just, even matter. It doesn't matter. They just win. If, if this three-way tie breaks the way it would, it would be... So now Mammoth has a chance for first. We have to say that. But yeah. if Clutch beats Mammoth, Clutch would be 2-0 over Mammoth, who would be 2-0 over UOL, who would be 2-0 over Clutch. That's why tie. you get the three-way tie, which 
is a two-game tiebreaker seeded by average win time. That was not fast. So Mammoth has quite a day ahead of them that they can end if they beat Clutch. Just what a day of League of Legends. <laughs> it's just incredible. Oh. Dracos, you and I got to cast together more often. <laughs> this is good, dude. <laughs> it's... Honestly, like we looked at, we're like Spice versus Destiny. Focus me, you know. This is game, you know, slow, Woo. steady, very clean. Nope, total upset. Clutch <laughs> thought they'd run it back. Nope, totally got smashed. This game, Mammoth looked like they were done. We're like, ah, results. Maybe this time, the standings, the predictions, the seeds, everything will line up, and we'll just get a normal game of League of Legends. No, no is the answer. King Zaya was the answer, and yeah. just monstered through that game. We we said during the pick and ban phase, these compositions favor both teams in the way they want to play. But when it came down to it, UOL couldn't find enough fights. And you just got to look at that mid lane turret. Like, you got to flank around through the jungle and dive. At some point, you have to do that. And UOL was unable to do so. And now they need to regroup, relax, because there's a chance they have to still play tiebreaker games. Yeah, you got to focus up. At you got to get. Day every piece of information you can out of the last few games, iron out every single hmm. mistake, and I mean, it's a big task for any of these teams because it, it no longer looks like you're just going to be a clean, one-and-done sort of day. <laughs> no. But, uh, I mean, that's enough from us. Let's check in with Lauren Destiny, see what he has to say. Thank you very much, guys, and thank you, Destiny, for joining me. That was a game, let's say. <laughs> How was it for you guys? Uh, it was incredibly nerve-wracking. Uh, this game meant a lot to us because obviously now the group is crazy. Like we don't know who can come first seed, second seed. So um, to beat UOL a second time is really good for us. Um, I think the tiebreakers work due to time or like head-to-head. -head, so mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just feels really good to, to finally win for those because we've, we've had a shocking past years and we really want to change it this year. And in a way, the game took a long time to unlock. You had the perfect tools to do it, though. So why do you think it took you guys, took you guys such a long time to find the good opportunities to play around the map and win fights? Um, based on the compositions, they had a really early game comp. Like, they had a Renekton and Rek'Sai. So we were just like, oh, guys, like, we're going to take a few hits early, and we just got to play to scale. Like, our composition, like, we have an Orianna, a Jarvan, a Rakan. Like, we just go for the wombo combo. Um, so yeah, we pretty much bled a little bit early game, a little bit too much. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we knew in the, at the end of the day, we're Mammoth, we'll do what we're going to do, and, and we, we won by doing that. Well, you have a next challenge playing against Clutch in the rematch. As you mentioned, we have a possible three-way tie between, the, uh, between you guys if Clutch wins the next game. I want to know, what do you think about Clutch now, based on what we saw this morning, and what do you think about your chances of beating them later today? Look, honestly, every team in our group is like very close in terms of skill. Uh, like, honestly, Clutch is just incredibly cocky. Like, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Like, they came into this world, they're like, oh, we're going to go straight to Group C. That's just not how play-ins work. Like, we are a competitor, and they need to treat us like that. We lost the first time around, but I'm sure as hell going to give them my best shot this, this next game. I, I wish you good luck on that, and maybe I'll see you for another winner interview <laughs> after you win. Thank you very much for the interview. And for more on the game, let's hear it from the desk. Thank you very much, Lauren. Welcome back to the State Farm at the Analyst Desk, where we are covering group rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> where no matter what happens, no matter what draft, the rock always beats scissors, who beats paper. Uh, Oppo player of the game, no doubt about it, is going to be king. His Zaya was fantastic. My analyst predicted a mammoth win, <laughs> but you both got to be surprised how they did. I can't believe you're giving him that prediction. <laughs> I cannot believe that. And there there is proof that he and, said it. And how I set it up was all about <laughs> King in the bot lane. This man really came in clutching. A lot of our eyes were on like triple on whether or not he could land the Orianna. But it was the feathers from King that was really instrumental in swing a lot of these fights. So notice how we were questioning like, does the GA make sense? Uh, what do we think of his itemization? But at the end of the day, when he was full build, he was not getting touched. He was not getting shut down. He had proper peel from Destiny, mm -hmm. and he really did come up big for Mammoth in the final. And I like the progression of the tournament overall, right? There was that cheeky little W from a Tristana the last time these two teams faced off up mid lane. 
toss them a Baron and he's like, oh my god, like what is happening? But this is a team composition for a late game stylistic AD carry in King. He's the most winningest player in the OPL uh, now with their recent victory here today. And that was a good performance. Now, of course, we are focusing a lot on some of the positives of how Mammoth managed to pick up a, a win this game. But there was a long period of time with yes. both Unicorns of Love and Mammoth were un unable, unwilling, incapable, whatever you want, direction you want to take it, of making plays happen. The second replay I've got I want to bring up is this uh, turnaround fight that started in the Red Buff area. And Ejim, talk me through some of the, the key instrumental moves here. Yeah, the big thing, you're kind of looking at the Orianna Shockwave. Me and Vettius were having a, a, a big discussion about the itemization here, but this was really like the point of the game where UOL are trying to force the Baron. It stalled out for a very long time, but as you see pointed out in your screen, King is being defended. Multiple members peeling back. The stopwatch does come out to buy Boss a little bit of time, but the Feathers rip back. He gets the cleanup kill on No Man's, and they just get a, his first triple kill out of two of this game. What's important to note here is that this fight should have been very difficult for Mammoth to take. That could have been the game the moment that decided it for you well, because they had the inhib bot. They didn't have mid pushed in, but they had control over top, and it was their right to be able to move through the jungle. But primarily because they didn't have that mid control, it allowed uh, MMM to group up and actually challenge them in the jungle, but then they focused the Leona. And the fact that they're focusing the support and throwing all that investment onto the front line meant that it could have ended in disaster. And that's why so much praise has to go to King. Mm. He set up those yeah. feathers, and pulling them back just stopped the fight dead in its track and then allowed Mammoth to come back. And with that fight, that then allowed him to get his four items that allowed the Orianna to get closer to her death cap. Yeah. And now, because they prioritized the defensive itemization rather than going for the damage, which in my opinion is what they needed earlier on, it then turned into these fights, which ultimately became one-sided and heavily in favor of Mammoth. Right at the beginning of the game, uh, 10, 15-ish minutes, Ejim and I were talking about how this game is going to play out. It was pretty slow. And you said something like, undeniable or unquestionable uh, uh, better team fights for Mammoth. And we saw it coming true mm -hmm. as the game played out. Talk me through this last one. We got one more replay is a top lane fight that actually uh, UOL started. But what was it about this late game, this composition, and the decision making that helped Mammoth win all the fights? Yeah, I think it's also something not even specific to this game. We saw it with Loki yesterday. The Syndra plus an AD carry composition somewhere else. We've seen the Syndra with a solo lane Tristana. This is now two Syndras without a form of consistent AD damage of the AD carry lose games, right? I was saying like the team fight advantage that Mammoth have drafted themselves. Once it gets later, they have the Kennen, they have the Jarvan, the Ori, the Wombo, you can say, and then they have the Kaisa or, or the Zaya rather that just yeah. gets peeled, and that damage isn't matched on the other side of the coin from UOL. We are a little pressed for time, so I do just want to move us along because a Mammoth win in Game 5 secures them the first seed and means that Clutch is out of Worlds 2019. However, if Clutch beat Mammoth, we have ourselves a three-way tie in the Rock, Paper, Scissors group. If three teams are tied in game score and head-to-head, -head, then two teams the longest win time play first with the loser finishing last in the group and the winner will then play the team with the shortest win time to determine who is first and second going into the knockouts now earlier now i'll note that this was before mammoth won the game i did ask my analyst to predict who would win between mammoth and clutch both of these boys are jumping off the Mammoth hype train and getting back to Clutch. Yeah. So why are we bailing on Mammoth? Because they don't play League of Legends for 30 minutes, quick shot. Like, <laughs> they, like I, I love the fact that Babip on Jarvan, he had a level two gank and then he ganked again at level five didn't gank again. He was wanting to count minutes. again. He was <laughs> tracking Rex so I'm he can stall the this game. This team has no early game presence. And as much as we criticize uh, clutch for 